Hey everybody, this is Charles Hain. Let's talk about the Skydio 2 Plus and its new keyframe feature. Now, to be clear, keyframe is a new feature that's coming out at the same time as the 2 Plus, but keyframe is also going to work with the original Skydio 2. And that is super nice of Skydio that they're rolling out a new feature working with a previous model. Uh, I've only gotten to play with the 2, so everything I'm talking about now is about the 2, but the keyframe feature is very cool. Before we get to keyframe, which is the thing that's relevant to filmmakers, let's talk about Skydio in general. Skydio's whole thing is a focus on autonomy. There's some other drone players. Obviously, the biggest one in the market in film is DJI. A few people have tried, like Parrot and GoPro, have tried to horn in on that space, and nobody has been able to because DJI is very dominant. I shoot a lot with DJI drones. And so you need an angle if you're going to come at DJI. And uh, Skydio's angle is... Uh, autonomy features. They have an autonomy engine. They The whole drone is covered with 360 cameras and it builds sort of a 360 view of the world that helps it navigate. Now, Skydio previously has been really popular with like action sports people because you can go shoot yourself. It has a really sophisticated tracking system. It works either just like tracking you, like when you're in auto track mode, you'll, you'll see like a little cross and the stuff it can track and you can select it and it'll track you uh, or with a cool thing called a beacon which like is a little remote control that makes the tracking a little more accurate but also gives you some control so you can like change the height of the track and make it 360 and stuff if you know someone who like likes to shoot themselves doing bike tricks the skydio has probably been the drone they've thought about which means you can try and do stuff like this where like i'm deliberately trying to crash the skydio i'm like please run into this tree please run into this chipping container please run into this basketball hoop and it doesn't do it it's tracking me it's trying to follow me but it has sort of a pretty sophisticated engine for recognizing that's an object i don't want to run into and flying around it which is super impressive now it's not perfect there was one time i did get it to hit a branch it was a very small branch in the manual it specifically says tiny branches can get hit i got it to do that um you know and every once in a while it would get lost like one time it got stuck somewhere and i had to like I had to manually fly it back home. We haven't really seen Skydio make a big thing with like narrative filmmakers. And I think what's really interesting about the keyframe features, I think it is gonna maybe bring Skydio to the attention of some narrative people, or at least I think it should. What is keyframe? Keyframe lets you program points in the shot like keyframes in Premiere or in Resolve or whatever app you use keyframes in. And then you click go and it flies through them and you can adjust speed all the way up to, I think 11 miles an hour was the max and down to one. So you can build a shot and then execute a shot. And there's like, it was great. It's pretty awesome. It's super huge as a tool in and of itself. I was super impressed and I think it's super fun and it makes me really tempted by Skydio because it's like, okay, now I'm in a situation where even if a shot is maybe outside my skills or if it's going to take me three takes to do it because there's a complicated twist and then wind comes up. And so I, I'm a little out of, you know, it's accounting for things like wind to the extent that it can. Obviously, it's not going to get huge surprise gusts of wind. It's still going to be difficult. But um, I found myself executing complicated, tricky shots faster. And it was really great because then you could do a take. And if you didn't like it, you can go edit your keyframes. So you're like, oh, I want it to get out faster or I want it to be in closer at this point. You just go in and you edit your keyframes. And what's super fun is because of that autonomy engine, you can get yourself closer to foreground objects than I think I would be otherwise. What you always want to give motion is multiple layers of things in frame. You want to swipe right past a tree. That's what gives you that sense of depth. And keyframe really let me do it in a really fascinating way. So I think, so I think Skydio should really end up being on the radar of a bunch of filmmakers for the keyframe features. Now, filmmakers, obviously, we care about image quality. There's a log. I really hope they come out with log in a Skydio 3 in the next year or two, because then it's like a real competitor. It does 4K 60 frames. Looks nice. I would take 4K 24 frames in log. That would make... But, like, honestly, high contrast shots, like the shot of the skyline with the ducks in the foreground and the burnout, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration that you can see there on the... Uh, on the burnout but it's really easy to fix it's like a two second color grading fix to get rid of it um and so that wasn't a big deal i'm not like freaked out about that um log would have given me more room to color grade this shot but it still looks nice in a quick grade with the hdr tools and resolve without log so maybe i'm happy with the image out of this i mean 
I don't shoot 100% drone. I shoot an establishing shot on drone. I do a lot of dock work lately and I shoot like, I need some transitions between scenes. I need transitions between locations. I'll fly a drone from one location to another and turn it into a hyperlapse. I do that stuff on a drone. So I don't need it to be 100%. Like, I don't need from it what I get from an Alexa LF shoot. <laughs> I need different things from it. And I actually was kind of impressed with the Skydio footage. I mean, Log would help. ProRes would help. RAW would help. Maybe there'll be a Skydio Pro in the future. But honestly, Keyframe was an interesting enough and useful enough tool that I found myself really like, oh. And then, obviously, if you're like a self-shooter, um, if you are like, I do dance videos for TikTok or whatever, like the autonomy tools are, are too good not to be tempted. The first thing that came to my mind is compositing. Because I was like, oh, I could do the same shot four times and then composite it together. And you can do that. And they have a great demo shot where they've done it really well. I never got it to work perfectly. A, I'm not the world's best compositor, but B, I really think it works best on a windless day to try and do that. And every day I went out to shoot, it's New York in the winter, it was all windy. I never had a windless day in my test period with the Skydio 2. Um, so I really think that uh, it can work well. I saw their test shot and it worked well. My windy day shots, I'm like, oh, you know, I bet a, I bet a compositor I know could actually make this look really slick. Um, you can see sort of watching here, you're like, oh, they're really close. If you really went in there, you could make it work. I think the compositing feature is something that will get better with time. You know, what are the things we need to make the compositing feature better? Um, I would love the keyframes to show up as markers in the QuickTime file. That would be amazing because then I could do the shot at like different speeds and I could use speed ramp to like line them up or just in terms of lining them up in general, having the markers and being able to line them up would, would be killer. Um, I would love to be able to save keyframes. Uh, I would actually pay for a subscription service that let me save keyframes like Skydio Cloud or whatever so I could save those keyframes so that I could do like a dawn and a dusk shot or a dawn and a noon shot and comp them together for like a time lapse. Or like, you know, the climate is changing. Uh, shorelines are going to change. I would love to like every, on the same day every year or four times a year at different seasons shoot the shoreline in Calvert Faux Park where... I'm shooting all this and then composite that over a decade. To do that, I'm going to need really good, accurate repeatability. Now, Sony Airpeak is doing repeatability as well, and they let you save all of this data over time, but it's only GPS. And GPS is only accurate to like six feet or something crazy. This is way more accurate than GPS can give you. Uh, it's using, you know, Keyframe is using all of the data from the autonomy engine to build a picture of the world and then repeat that shot. I just hope we can save it. In terms of the differences with the Skydio 2 and the Skydio 2 Plus, I only got to fly the 2. The bonuses you get with the Plus are longer battery life, which is like, great. I got like 22 minutes out of the 2. Longer battery would be fine. I'm never going to complain about it. But the bigger thing that I actually think makes the 2 a better choice is you get much longer range out of the 2. And you do find yourself noticing with the, with the 2 Plus, you get longer range. And you do find yourself noticing with the 2, like, this doesn't quite fly as far away from me as I would like it to. You know, you can still clearly have a line of sight on, on the drone and your signal's dropping out and you're like, but I see it. It's right there. It's like not even that small. Um, I thought this was a New York City issue, but also got to fly this upstate on another windy day upstate and still, uh, still an issue up in Jeffersonville, New York, where there's like not a lot of radio interference. So I, uh, yeah, it's, I, the two plus, I think it should be on filmmaker's radar, which is something that Skydio wasn't really on my radar a year ago, but I think Skydio is something they're making a move on filmmakers. And I think this is a feature that is going to have a lot of interesting applications for filmmakers that we should be thinking about.